The following production is part of the Play Some Video Games Podcast Network. Johnny Reese here from PSVG, thanking you once again for tuning in to another episode of the Nintendo Shack podcast. Oh my god, Kevin is here, and he's typing words all over my face, apparently. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Hey, Kevin. <laughs> hey! I've had a uh, really bad day. You have, and I'm, I'm so glad you, you called me, not, not so glad you had a bad day, because ever since I uh, did that episode with Mr. Badbit, my mm-hmm. keys aren't working in the shack, and I don't know what's up with that. My we got key. new like locks now that we're Patreon powered. We have like scan, we have key cards. Um, oh, you have to take it up with logistics. Like I think Lucas is in charge of it. Um, he only works on Fridays from like two thirty to two forty five, so it's like a really tight window. I didn't know he was a government employee like he, that. Okay, he's, he's out next weekend. You can't do it next weekend. Actually, okay. matter of fact, if you just send an email to the we don't reply to this email at nintendoshack.com just send it there and we'll we'll get right on it i'm telling you it's a priority for us fair enough i was told jason was here and he's not here jason's not here no Shaq that's, has a surprise. that's why you called me Shaq has a surprise tomorrow um tomorrow we're all as a team going on the um the josh n64 josh's nintendo power cast so that's pretty cool yeah which i thought was cool because i wanted to do it together like we could all split off and done it but i was like no no we should all do it together like if you really want the shack we should all jump in so um we're recording a day early kevin i have been on the road <laughs> since 5 15 <laughs> this afternoon yeah um I'll just and it's, and... Ten, it's 10 o'clock for reference too for anybody yeah. not watching the live stream so yeah i'll go ahead and apologize to anybody that's listening to this right away just let's get this right out of the way I've had no time to prepare like I normally do. Um, I really had no time to think about it. Uh, we had an overturned tanker, gasoline tanker, on a major highway, like the major highway for the, for the city of Atlanta. And you, the city of Atlanta is already known for traffic issues. Like when everything is <laughs> working, we have traffic issues. Um, spilled gasoline all over the road. There were fires. There was a life light. They shut the entire interstate down. For like three exits and just dumped us all onto the side streets. And it's just bumper to bumper to bumper for hours. I'm I'm at my wits end. Everybody's cutting each other off. There are people in the shoulders, people in the grass. Like it's like the walking dead out there Mm -hmm. in in, in South Cobb County. And I've just, (laughs) oh, I am just, I'm at a loss. I I brought two glasses of rum down here. I'm going to need one. Just to kind of get back in the mood, I'm gonna need another one to cool down. But uh, <laughs> let's restart this thing properly. Greetings, Kooplings. I'm happy that we're doing this. Shack, <laughs> the shack must continue, right? We must always shack, you know? So we've got to be there every Friday morning. We've got to be there for you. So we're going to do that. I do have a topic that I want to talk about. We do have a okay. question that I got okay. from my friend Rebecca, but I haven't had a chance to really think about it. So we're going to be kind of answering it on the fly. Sure. Um, but before I do that, let's go ahead and cover the news that you've got. Let's go ahead and do that now. I like getting news okay. out of the way. And then yeah. we'll talk a little bit about what we've been playing before we move into that stuff. Okay. So, I mean, the biggest news story of the day today is uh, Forbes messed up. Uh, they went ahead and deleted it anyway. But uh, the cat's out of the bag. Diablo 3 Eternal Collection, uh, which includes the original game, the Reaper of Souls expansion, Rise of the Necromancer pack, and all... All of the updates the game has received thus far, which, I mean, Blizzard continues to support this game, um, it's coming. You'll also be able to get an armor set that makes you look like Ganondorf That's so uh, from cool. Legend of Zelda, which That's is awesome. so good. It's so good, and it fits. It Like, once yep. again, it's another cross-reference that just makes sense. It's so much better than, like, the Link stuff in Skyrim. Yes, yes, and it, lo- it fits better, and it looks better. Uh, Switch version will also let you play multiplayer in a number of different ways, so not just online, which is the expected one. Uh, four players can do local co-op on the same Switch, so you can play docked and have you know four people play. Um, you can have four people play co-op on separate Switches without an internet connection, so they just kind of link up. 
Uh, and then the fully online co-op. Uh, it's going to cost $60, no surprise there. Yeah. Um, it will be out sometime later this year. The release date hasn't been announced yet, but I expect when they officially do their press release, which we're hearing is tomorrow, uh, Blizzard will give that hard date. Um, but this is the first Blizzard game on the Nintendo platform in 15 years. What was the last one? I do not know. Okay. I just thought, <laughs> but, I thought if somebody mentioned that, that they would include that. So no. this has been rumored for quite some time. Yes. Um, I don't think it really comes as a surprise to anybody, but I do think it's a welcomed addition to the fall lineup. There's a lot of people already talking about, like, oh, they have Mario. You know, like, there's always, every time we get into gamer wars, console wars with each other, it always boils down to exclusives. And not that this isn't exclusive, but it's kind of launching on a system and a window where, at least specifically for Nintendo gamers, it does kind of feel like an exclusive. Because everybody's yeah. already played and everything, but, like, the buzz that will be generated this fall when Diablo 3 launches will be just specifically for Switch and specifically for Nintendo. It's like, you know, like Bayonetta or something. Like, you know, like Bayonetta launched long ago, but when that port came to, you know, Wii U and then subsequently to Switch, there's always like that buzz, that second that mm-hmm. second wave, that second cycle. And I know we've talked about this before, so I don't want to go like crazy in depth in it, but I think we both agree Diablo is a really good fit. Like that's a oh, yeah. good port. That's a good game to port to it. So I'm excited. Yeah, it, I haven't played. No, it it makes sense, and I, I will play it. I had it on PS4, uh, played it briefly, but it, it, Diablo is a game that you play with other people and i was playing it alone so it didn't make sense uh if people get it on the switch i will be there uh, i think jason's already expressed interest that he would he will double dip even though he had on pc he'll play it uh, i feel like this is a, definitely a lucas game that lucas will be playing this as well so i'm all for it um the last blizzard games uh were blackthorn the lost vikings and rock and roll racing for game boy advance <laughs> So, and prior to that was uh, StarCraft 64. So that's how that's how far back we're going for Blizzard to be uh, supporting Nintendo. But I'm all for it. I, I think I think the idea is great. You're right. People are already moaning about it, but the Switch has proved that hey, old game is not old uh, for Fortnite, some reason. It, it sells. Yep. Fortnite was huge. I don't mean to take any discredit. Fortnite sure. was huge. Period. But there is definitely like a, a a wave, a momentum, a boost for Fortnite when it hit Switch. When Fortnite hit Switch, all of a sudden it became. Not just like big game, but like everywhere game. Oh like yeah, every podcast was talking about it. Not just you know like the 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 kind of funnies of the world. So it's pretty pretty <laughs> nuts. Um, I thought, anyways, I, I'm excited. N64 Josh has made it to the chat. Thank you for jumping over there. Oh hey, uh, appreciate it, buddy. Can't wait to talk to you tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I'm still at a loss for like my day. As I try to collect <laughs> my thoughts, I'm just like, what an awful awful day. Uh, <laughs> but um. Yeah, man. Crazy. Crazy fun. Um, yep. I, I'm all about... So we've got Mario Party. We have Diablo. Yep. Yep. We've got Smash. Smash, Ultimate, of course. We have Starlink. Mm-hmm. We have Nintendo Online launching. Yep. Do you think... So, like, we know that... Um, who, who and did, Nintendo, don't forget, Nintendo still claims that there was another, there's another release game. coming out this year they yeah. have not announced yet. So, and I mean, like, to think this is going to be one of those things that, like... They're going to announce, and it has to come out super soon. Like, they're not going to touch... Uh, Smash is in December, right? So they're not going to touch December with another game right. at all. Mm-hmm. Um, Mario Party is what, October? Mm-hmm. I forget if it's September or October. It's one of those, I think. Yeah, so, no, no, you know, they could September. release it any of those other months, but it's already mid-August, and they haven't announced whatever this is. So if they do, they got to move quick and say, hey, it's going to be out in 30 days or less, or whatever the case is, because uh, there's no way they're going to send something out along with Smash to get lost in the mix completely. Yeah, so and then we've got a, a just a slew of indie games that just mm-hmm. keep dropping. They just keep coming. They keep getting announced. We've got Gone Home. It's coming out next week. Or yep, next coming out next week. week. Uh, not no price date yet, but will you be able to purchase on August twenty third? There you go. But yeah, it'll be like twenty bucks. Probably. Like, like Firewatch is coming. We know a lot of these games are in the works. They're on the way, so they'll fill in in between there and ultimate and Pokemon. <laughs> Duh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, duh, duh. Yeah, Pokemon, Pokemon. Let's go. The one that'll probably sell the most, like the one. <laughs> I yeah. love Smash, and Smash is amazing. And Smash looks like a better game in my opinion. But Pokemon oh, yeah. will outsell Smash. That's yeah, just pure definitely. demographics. Pure demographics. Pokemon will outsell Smash. I, I agree. I agree there too. Um, to also keep on the the eShop then news, uh, Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. Uh, the release date is coming quick. Uh, Capcom announced to be offering a free demo. Uh, for anyone eager enough to get into the action early, it's available tomorrow, which is pretty awesome. So they kind of announced and say, hey, by the way, you'll get it right away. Nice. Um, 
So, yeah, it's hitting. Um, the full release is scheduled to hit uh, August 28th, so the whole thing will be there, um, acting as an expansion, basically, to Monster Hunter Generations from 3DS. Right. Um, so, yeah, and the um, Breath of the Wild DLC package made available in Japan will also be there uh, for the Switch release here. So, you once again, you can play as Link in another game he doesn't belong in, but maybe this one fits better than Skyrim. But that's coming, too, so anybody that's interested in that, go download it tomorrow, or if you're listening to the podcast, it's already there. Go download it. I'm interested to see how that game sells. I want to know if the portable Monster Hunter community that I thought for so long propped up the 3DS is still there. I don't know if they're still there or not. Do they move on to the PS4? Like, or do they want the big console experience, or are they still there? Yeah, I don't know. It's it's crazy. So, like, I played... I don't know if it's Generations. I have one of them on the 3DS, and it just did not grab me at all. I think the game just seemed to be too big for something that small. And I think the Switch is a better fit uh, between the dock and being able to just play it portably in a bigger format. So I, I, it never grabbed me before, but uh, I think I'll be doing the demo. I'll give that a shot at least. Cool. Okay. Um, la- yeah, last bit of news then. Um, Switch bundle. Oh, no, right. it's not the Smash one we all thought we'd be getting. Um, this one is a Walmart exclusive. Uh, it will retail uh, $359.99 starting on September 5th. Uh, and it's going to have 1 2 Switch. Yep. It's good and stuff. Mario Aces. So uh, I don't know. It's something to talk about like, hey, they're doing a bundle. But I, I think these are, those, I mean, 1 2 Switch, nobody's buying that at this point anyway. Those cheap. And Aces penny, didn't do well. <laughs> pinching company corporate goons. <laughs> They yep. should launch it with Zelda and Odyssey, not one two switch and tennis, but we know why they're doing that, because they're gonna sell Zelda yep. and Odyssey once you buy it. Um Dark Souls, nineteenth October. So that's another game. I'm I'm not interested in that game at I'm all. I'm zero, zero interest in that game. I don't get it. I don't know why people are excited for it. Especially at this point, like it's talk about old game is old. I mean that that one is really old and yeah, it's I been redone and three masters. It, sells. I, it, it, it feels probably like everything will. does. Everything that touches yeah. Switch sells. Like Switch like, sells. What is like? Has there been the article? Has anybody come out and been like, "Hey, we brought this game to Switch and it just totally bombed"? Like, is that is that? I haven't. Well, what are, like, no. I mean, Jules, Jules, Jules said yeah, something, but that that was on 3DS, though, wasn't it? It wasn't. No, it was no, chicken no, wiggle on 3DS. He said, well, he said that Muds did not sell well. That's right. Until he put it on sale. On sale. Yeah. When he put it on sale and it went into the other tab, all of a sudden it got an uptick. But he was like, this is not going well. Yeah. And I don't know if it's necessarily that it's the game isn't doesn't generate the interest. I think it might be more of they can't find it in the eShop now, especially now with the amount of indies we're seeing coming out. Nintendo's pledge like, hey, you're going to see 30 to 40 indies every single week. Like, that's a lot to sort through. And, yeah, the eShop has made some better things with, like, the feature tab, the sale tabs it's better but it's still not great unless you know exactly what you're looking for and say like hey i want x game it's not a thing that you can kind of just go through and browse and say hey what, what might strike my interest unless it's coming out that week you won't find it sure um there was also that devolver digital game that i posted in the discord Did you see that was a gree grizz gree i'm not sure how to pronounce it g-r-i-s it looks the art style kevin is almost identical to Jotun. it looks oh yes i did see you i did see you post that yes is that coming out this week or is that already out it comes out christmas but okay gorgeous but it's yeah it is not like the Jotun. i didn't i wasn't as big a fan of Jotun as you and jason but Ah. um, this game looks it's it is gorgeous it's yeah from a visual you definitely put it on your on your list if you haven't seen it we posted in our discord go check that out uh psvg.blog click the discord button Automatically get you in there and uh, check out that trailer. Trailer's insane. It is. It's it very so good. good. Ben, and it's definitely something you don't normally see from Devolver, like doing something. That's true. That looks. I don't want to say it looks good, but like, it doesn't just have like a niche silliness something thing to weird. it. Like, it seems like a legit. Yeah, right. It it seems too normal for them. That is actually true. That is very true. Um, I I like I like I typically like what they're doing. It's very um, you know, like um, Child of Light ish. Yes. It looks like an Ubi art game, just like Jotun did too. Yeah. It just looks yep. it looks great. Anything else? That's that's all I got really. Okay. So now that you've made your 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 return to the shack, <laughs> you, you, you've made your prodigal you, the prodigal son has come home. <laughs> um how have you been enjoying that Switch of yours? What have you been doing in Nintendo Land of late? So um been playing Fire Emblem Warriors. Um 
I will say this is going to hurt you a little bit. I, I agree. It's good. It's good, but it's not. I Zelda agree. was way better. Like, I don't know what it, I don't know if it's the characters because I mean, I've played Fire Emblem. It's I'm not, it's that. not like I'm right. It's not like I'm not a Fire Emblem fan because I certainly am. But for me, a majority, not all of them, but a lot of the characters are so forgettable and they don't really matter. So to highlight them in this game where they do matter, it's kind of like, well, I'm, I'm not like, oh my God, I remember that person. That person's all. Awesome. No, it's. Ooh, I disagree. You know, with that. it's kind of. It depends. Like, like I mean, certain ones, Lucina, like the, the major characters, yeah, but then you get to some and you're like, okay, you could have been X Knight from every single Fire Emblem and you would have been doing the same exact thing. Like, I disagree with that, with that point, but I have something I think actually complements your point. Okay. I, I think the main difference between Hyrule Warriors and Fire Emblem Warriors, as, as it, when it comes to me recommending it to somebody else, in Hyrule Warriors, they definitely, in my opinion, took much more care with the narrative and how they portrayed yeah. the characters. Yeah. And the narrative in Fire Emblem Warriors is almost non-consequential and really doesn't matter at all. And I yeah. think the characters that you don't know would have an opportunity to be more impactful had they told a Fire Emblem-like story. My yes. biggest downfall with Fire Emblem Warriors is there's no Fire Emblem story to be found. There's no, no it's, kings yeah. crossing paths and murder and you know betrayal and deceit. There's none of that. You know, I need like no. some, I need my Game of Thrones storylines. Like, let's get deep. This is very whimsical. It's like, hey, they took our mom. We got him back, and we're good. Your friends, we're friends. All right. Like, it's very just cookie cutter. I. Just... It, it's they should have used existing characters to be the main characters existing as opposed story. to the twins. You really, instead of creating these twins, they'd be like, hey, they're going to be the narrative device we're going to drive with. That's Do true. somebody that we might have some attachment to already. Like, like it'd be Hyrule like Warriors, where you start hitting the different exactly. chapters and the different timelines. Exactly. And, and there was none of that. There's no, no and there and I didn't like the um it feels rushed, so I mean the, the combat was fine. It, it the, the the characters that are on horseback seemed a little off. Like in my mind, if you're on a horse, you should move faster than somebody it, that's running. Kind of reminded me that's of Midna and uh, Wolf Link. It's kind yes, of, it's just, yeah. right. But it was just it, it was used so much more because it wasn't just one character mm -hmm. versus this one. And then the weapons I didn't like at all because it was just kind of like, hey, if they're a sword user, you can equip any sword. Like it was harder to navigate. Like I mean, I like the optimized equipment. So yeah, you can just, just kind of do a quick one, I just did right? But for like, I kind of was like at first until I noticed. That, I was like, this is really overwhelming because like, how do I know if I'm using the best sword? Like, it was just kind of like, I like the simplicity of like, hey, this is his weapon. You have four of the same weapon. This one's stronger, so let's scrap these other ones and use the strongest one. Like that whole gear mentality worked much better in Hyrule Warriors as well. So it, it's still a lot of fun. It's a great button master. You just kind of unplug and just go with it. But, um, but overall, I was let down a little bit. How good is being a Pegasus Knight and flying. That is pretty fun. It's that pretty is fun. fun. I never forget yeah. the first. I was like, oh, I'm flying. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, this is so much fun. That's, that's funny. It's true. It's true. So, yeah, I'm a little let down by that. Um, other than that, uh, I've been playing uh, Octopath Traveler, mm. um, which I will say, and uh, we, we've had our conversations before, and I know you sold yours. For I you, sold that was the right move for you because this is a game that you it just it's not a Donny game and there's nothing wrong with it it's a great game i'm not knocking because i i'm really enjoying it but it's just so slow and everybody kind of rebuts your whole grindy statement and i kind of want to rebut them a little bit yes it's not grinding in the, in the aspect that you're just going to keep walking in circles to fight enemies to level up but it's like hey every battle to go like let's go final fantasy like once you get to a certain point you go in final fantasy you attack somebody that's way weaker than you it's like two hits and the and the, the battle's done like you're done in like 10 seconds in octopath it's like at least 10 minutes not 10 minutes but it's at least two minutes for every single battle <laughs> i'm i'm, I'm um, carrying on i'm multitasking i'm talking to josh and i am listening to you yes no no i know um but it's just a matter of like hey you have to break down their defense you have to find out what their weakness is because otherwise your attacks do absolutely nothing and it's just like okay battles that could be like you're fighting somebody really weak and you have four characters versus their one this should be like you're done in one turn it never is it um and going. for me so for me yeah it's just going to slow down and the whole dynamic of like hey you have these eight characters who all have fantastic stories and very different stories which makes it great but for me, I don't know. I, I can't imagine anybody just going through and playing just with those four characters. So, like You have to get all of them and do chapters for all of them. So. That's what I was going to ask, because had yeah. I played the game... You would have tried to mainline. 100%. Yeah. I'm going to pick four characters and go. Yeah. 100% that, that, that was the plan. 
And that would not have ended, that would have not gone well for you. So it's like you pick your first character, and yes, you can go anywhere on the map and continue the story to get the other characters in whatever order you want. But it's like when you pick a character, it's almost like a clear path. It's like, hey, this one's nearest to me, so I'm going to go here and unlock this person. And now that I'm here, hey, this person's right here, so I'm going to unlock that person. I can't imagine you saying, okay, I'm starting with this person, and I'm going to go all the way to the other side of the map and live to get this person, and then these four people just stop. Like, it's it just the way the map is laid out, it makes you want to get and do everything. Um, which for you, that's just, it's going to be massive. Like, I'm, I'm going to be playing this game well into next year, guaranteed. I play Fire Emblem and I play Pokemon almost the exact same way. I get a core group that I use, yeah, even in Fire Emblem. I do have like Fire Emblem. They yep. come in and out of the party, and I never use them. I'm like, nope, yep. I got my dudes, and this is what we do. And I play every, I, I mean, that's just how I play those types of games. So Yeah, Fire Emblem, I do the same thing. It's it's for me, it's like, I just go right through. I, I just plow right through it, love it. Um, But yeah, this, Octopath is a great game, but it just definitely, 100% is not a game for you. You would you would despise it. I'm glad that you, I think, I think you have a good take on me. I felt good in my decision. That's why, I mean, that's why yeah. I made it. Just all of the, again, all of the feedback I kept hearing, I was like, I'm setting myself up for Doom. Not yeah. to mention, I'd be putting off so many games that I'm eager to get into that I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, so, before I get into mine, anything else? Uh, just that last game that we both reviewed that is now out on How far one, did you play? You go down? Uh, I only got about three, maybe four hours in, so okay. not too, too far. Okay. And, and I went really slow as I was going through it. So Kevin is talking about State of Mind, which we had the opportunity to review. For Data Lake Entertainment, which I am excited about. I reviewed the game. I did the, mm -hmm. the PSVG review proper. Um, I scored it 78 out of 100. I was very interested in seeing other reviews. Kevin, I'm on the high side. This is like Mario Party Star Rush all over again. I'm on the high yeah. side for this one. I think with this one, so I read, your, I read your review, and I agree with most of it. I think the issue is, and kind of the reason you wanted me to play it too, was, was that I just came off of Detroit. Mm -hmm. And... This has Detroit vibes, but number one, let's get this right out of the, out of the gate. Visuals, it's not, yeah, even yeah, yeah, not even close. It's polygonal, which which is fine. It's a fine art style. Like I don't knock it for that. But if you're sitting there saying, "Well, it's a futuristic, story driven game with cyborgs," you're going to go back and think of Detroit, which I still stand to this. Like that's the best looking game I've Hang seen yet. Not that yeah. it has anything really to do with visuals. Let me ask you this though. Yep. Did you get to the cyber sex part yet? No. Okay. Because I have that's... a video locked and loaded for YouTube that's going live tomorrow. Because the video review is today. <laughs> there was a chapter yeah. that when it started and I got into it, I was like, I'm going to restart this and record it. Because this is the most interesting part about this entire game. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's coming. But yeah, you're right. It's it's not the visual spectacle at all. Now, there, now yeah. I will say, I said this in my review. I think the visual style is intriguing. Yes. I get that it's simple. My biggest issue is that a lot of the NPCs are the same. So yes. like the environments, it looks like you're in like a room of androids because it's like three models duplicated. Right, you can't tell. Times. It's hard to tell the difference. Yeah, yeah. no, it really is. And it, and it's it doesn't like, feel it reminds me that way. Yes. So that that was my big issue with the visuals, but the environments are actually quite pretty. Yes, even for a simple design. Um, I took several gifts, especially like when the rain is falling and you're outside yep. and you get yep. the lighting. It's very good. And then like. All of the uh, the sky lit, you know, skies, the sun and sundown. You see spaceships and stuff flying through there. I really kind of dig it. It's kind of like uh, that Star Wars original trilogy type style. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. You sure. know, it's kind of cool. Yeah, um, yeah. The story is really good. The story, the story is good. I will, I will give it that. And that's unfortunately for me, kind of where I can kind of stop saying not good things, but like positives for this game it's like the story is good but once again me like i'm the wrong person coming right off detroit to be like hey sure i'm gonna i'm drawing parallels even though i'm trying not to as i'm playing through it i'm like man this is not the same game the story is good uh, as far as i'm into it and i know there's got to be some twists coming um based on your review like there's gotta be stuff coming but it's funny you mentioned the cyber sex scene so th there's a sex club in <laughs> in detroit too so like if i oh, one nice. thing i'm gonna be like well, well, if, you, if you're going to do a sci-fi game, I think it's, you know, you, you got to have yeah, uh, yeah, androids. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a Mass Effect thing. All, all the games kind of do that. <laughs> that's true. Um, my, my biggest issue with that game, well, not my biggest issue, one of my issues with that game that I did see a lot of other reviews harp on, 
I didn't, and in hindsight, maybe I should have, but I, the reason I think I didn't was maybe because the ending was so impactful and the highlights of the game were, I thought, ratcheted up so much that I think it made sense. The game is really slow, and it's really slow for yes. like the entire first half. Okay. So I played the game for maybe eight hours. The okay. first four hours, I actually kind of felt bored. There were times where I was like, yeah. man, I shouldn't have taken Why am this I off doing this? You. Like, yeah. I'm going to keep doing this. But then some stuff happens, and you're like, oh, this is a fun game again. And then it like <laughs> slows down again, but then something else happens, and then something else happens. Oh. And then it all builds to the crescendo. Yep. And I don't think maybe, in my opinion, I don't think some other reviewers gave that enough credit because I really enjoyed the ending. And I don't think I would have enjoyed the ending as much had there been more action before it. Okay. And almost like it made it like enhanced it. Like mm-hmm. the, the lull into the narrative just kind of made it. And I said it in my review, it felt grounded. This isn't a story about like aliens and yeah, androids no, no, it's, and robots. Yeah. This is a story about people. Yeah. And there's a lot of like relationship. This is like some actual deep stuff. Stuff that make made me, me anyway. Made me reflect. Yeah. On some things. Yeah, you could have taken I really appreciated. Right, you could have taken the same story and plugged it in any sort of time frame or environment, and yeah. it would have been just as effective. I agree with that 100. percent I think the, where you're, the reason you're on the higher end of the scale, and I'm 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 not that far from you from what I've played so far. Honestly, I probably put it like maybe 74, 75. So I'm really not that far like off same. from you. Yeah. Right. But it's like these other reviewers, maybe they play Detroit. And that's all I'm, I'm going to say. Like, until you play Detroit, it's going to be, I, I want you to play it and then say, okay, now I get it. Because it just, the reason that, that I scored the way I did is yeah. we score games like, a, you know, on Seth's scale, our 70 games are like good. Yeah. I thought this was yeah, a yeah. good, not great game. Right. That's I where I gave it. I mean, that's, that's literally where I fell. And I was like, it's not a bad game. I didn't think at any point it was a bad game. Uh, no. It's slower than some, but it's not bad. Yeah. It's good. No, we, and we've played slow games before, so that's not really now, a deterrent. Um, for full awareness, we didn't get a chance to, excuse me, to play this on Switch. Right. We're playing on Xbox One. On Xbox One, it looks great. Um, yeah. The only team that I've seen review it on Switch, I believe, Nintendo World Report, and they did not like it as much as me. Um, there were some low times even on X. They weren't that yeah. bad. They weren't yeah. bad enough to notice, but um, they were there. I have no idea how this game looks or runs on Switch, and I think that's I can't cool. imagine it looks very different. To be honest, load times that might be the the kill factor there too. But I, my problem with these types of games is I almost feel that they are designed better for the big screen. So yeah, you can play it on your Switch in dock mode and have that experience. But in my mind, like these types of games just work better on PlayStation, on Xbox, on PC because of the grand scale of them. And sure. I, I think I think anything that they port to those things like telltale games another example like so you got batman what season one on switch and yep. the minecraft story mode that's it yep we haven't got anything else so no, it's no. like i think telltale knows we have the new one which i'm the new batman to. no or the oh, okay the other one okay yeah so uh, i'm just wondering if that if that's a factor too like i don't think they they garnering the attention uh on the switch as they do on the other consoles my two biggest issues with state of mind which i did harp on my in my review uh number one the price Forty dollars is just way too much. It's just way yeah. too much. In a, in a yep. world with Firewatch and Gone Home and Edith Finch and all these other games that are twenty bucks, it's just yep. way overpriced. Especially for eight hours, eight hours of gameplay. It's not exactly. Yeah. Um, my second one is the it, the. I don't want to say controls because the game controls fine. Walking around is just odd. There are yes. tons of like, the characters have these wide turn radiuses. So if you're running down a hallway. And you want a 180 and turn around. It's like you do this loop. It's like the Resident Evil games used to be. It's like a tank control game. And yep. you're just like, what is? I got caught on so many things in the environment. Oh, yeah. I was like, what? Chairs, the, tables, what is anything. happening? Yeah. I kept yeah, running they, into walls. Like, this is terrible. Yeah, they put like, a lot of stuff in the environment, too. So it's like, you, you can see a clear path. Like, hey, I'm going to walk from the dining room to the kitchen or whatever. And it's fine. But in the way, you see the living room. And you're like, okay, well, I can fit in between the couch and the table. Nope. No, you, you can't. can't. But uh, you're like, why? It's such There'd a wide like a space. There's a stapler but... on the floor and your character is stuck. <laughs> yes. You know, like yes. the smallest things, you just can't move. Yeah. Um, yep. But I'll tell you, I, agree. I don't want to talk about State of Mind anymore. That's, it's, yeah. it's, a good, That's good. it's a good game. I do like it. It might be one of the best narrative experiences you can play on Switch right now. Sure. Yeah. I don't think it's better than Oxenfree, but it's in that realm. 
Okay. You know, and if you can get it for cheap, like much, get on much sale. cheaper, get it, yeah. get it cheaper. And I said that in my review. That's another thing a lot of reviews don't do. I don't see any reviews that really care about price at all. I, I, I always think, say it. I, yeah, I always bring it up. I, I think it's just, I'm not sure if that's just us weird. It's as us as consumers because we pay for the yeah. games. We don't yeah, get all of them for free. Yeah. Um, but I think it's important. Like, let people know. They're asking I mean, that, that's a big factor for this game. Right. Like, a, a, a Ratchet and Clank costs 40 <laughs> Right. Like, an 8 out of 10 is different when it's a $60 game versus a $20 game. So it's exactly. like, yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. Okay. That price is a factor, I think, in, in the normal person day to day stuff. Another game that just launched on Switch, which is. Man, I really wanted. To, I, if I wasn't on the road for four and a half hours today, I would have came home and watched footage of it because I really wanted to. And that is The Walking Dead, the final season, which is out on Switch, launched day and date with the other consoles. But none of the other ones are on Switch. None of the yeah, the seasons one, two, and they never came to Wii okay. U either. There's no history there. Right? At all. No, there's not. Yeah, they're just kicking you right off from the start. Now, That's again, weird. up front, clarity. I played this game last night on Xbox One. The reason mm -hmm. I played on Xbox One and not Switch wasn't because of the pre-order bonus. Actually, at the time when I bought this, the Switch version wasn't announced. We didn't yeah. think it was coming. Like, that yeah. was like one of those stealthily launched things. I would love to know the performance of it because I got to tell you this, Kevin. The performance on Xbox One was great. The game ran and looked incredible for a Telltale game. I was like, man, it's actually really, really good. I'm not holding my breath on that with you. You always seem to run into the issues eventually. And, you know, I, so. ran, I even I had issues where, like, in between cutscenes, like, the music mm -hmm. would skip. But, okay. like, the actual moving of the Game. characters right. and doing stuff was actually really smooth, and the action felt tight, much better than any Telltale game I've ever played. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, like, I would run, and, like, the action buttons are kind of the same. So okay. it's almost like you get a little anticipation of the button command that's coming. It's not just okay. like surprise quick time. There's definitely yeah, yeah. still some of that. But the actual fighting kind of feels like an action game because like kick in the leg is always B and stab is always okay. Y. So you yeah. could run towards a zombie and you know what's coming. So I got way into it and um, boy on X did that game look good. I, I really, you because you, you're a fan of comics, you may be able to yeah. paint this picture better than me. They do something with the art style in this game that I haven't seen them do with other games that reminds me very much of comics. I just don't know the right words. They have environments. The near to the mm -hmm. character you are, they're colored and detailed. The background or the further away, you okay, just yeah. get like this gray and black yeah. shadowy color style. And it's like, I don't know where we are. I think we're in like Louisiana or something. Dude, it looks great. Because you have like all these like uh, tans and and grays yeah, yeah, and the stuff muted that colors, contrast yeah. over it uh, it just it looks fantastic that's cool i gotta i gotta play i so i played season one and i loved it started playing season two did not like it as much never finished it so i need to hop on the x and play our so. pre-order bonus there and no. go no just jump right in i would have having played and finished the first episode the first episode of the walking dead the final season you kind of choose to recap as much as you want there are decision things Ooh. where you tell other people your story. Okay. So you can kind of just catch yourself up, kind of. I and might just do that then. the decisions that you have, the decisions I made in the first chapter, yeah. really didn't pull from any of my historical stuff that I brought with me. Okay, maybe I'll do that I then. say you just go, man. Like, okay. just go. I, yeah. I really enjoyed it. Um, I thought it was really good. I mean, I was <laughs> like, I was really impressed. You know me kind of swore off the telltale games oh yeah yeah you did you know and i was like this one i was like man this one's good and it's worth mentioning now i also think this is worth before i say this i i'm skeptical but it's worth mentioning that they say all of the episodes will be out by the end of 2018 that's what they yes say. I, did, I did see that uh, schedule we'll see yeah. <laughs> they've said that before we'll see they but, have but i will i will say having coming off batman season two the, each episode was about a month away from each other. Like I think maybe one episode we waited a month and a half. Like they they were very timely. That's what, that team that worked on that. I know it's different each time, but the team that worked on the Batman ones they were they were really good and stuff was out when it was supposed to be. So uh, maybe they finally figured it out and get to the plan so they can hurry up and get us Wolf, uh, Wolf Among Us too. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, but yeah. <laughs> okay. The uh, other game that I played was um, I played State of Mind, I played The Walking Dead. And I played the Valkyria Chronicles 4. 
Ah, yes, you did. Demo. You took a lot of screenshots. <laughs> I'm buying that game. <laughs> really? That's uh... the first demo that I can remember that made me buy a game. Wario almost did. I almost bought WarioWare Gold straight because I love the demo. Yeah. But because of the Octopath thing, I've got so many games, I decided yep. to wait. Yeah. It's not, I'm, good. I'm, I'm totally getting Wario, mm -hmm. but I've been playing that Fruit Ninja. Or not Fruit Ninja. Not Fruit Ninja. Sushi Striker. Yeah. Oh, playing yeah. Sushi sorry. Stryker. I played the first chapter of Sushi Striker. Like the first two missions. I didn't get to play a lot. Um, yeah. Like just the first. I spent maybe 30 minutes with it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but because I bought Sushi Striker, I decided not to get WarioWare. Because mm -hmm. we got Sushi Striker. I got a Best Buy for like 20 bucks. Yeah. yeah, I remember that, yeah. So um, Valkyria Chronicles 4 is all the Fire Emblem that I want to hold me over until Fire Emblem. Fair it's, enough. Yeah. It's, it's really good. It's really good. It's been a long time since I've played a Valkyria Chronicles game. It's been since the PS3. Yeah, me too. Yep. The game looks great. The tactics are really good. It's a little slow for my liking. Sure. But there is some optimization to speed it up that I didn't do. So like Fire Emblem, you can go in there and you can, you know, bypass cutscenes and speed up the opponent's turns. Stuff that I typically do with Fire Emblem that I didn't do in the demo just because I didn't want to. But having completed the demo, I was like, I'm going to go back. You know, when I, when I, anyway, long story short, when I came out of the demo, I was like, I'm totally buying this game. I'm even considering buying the collection, like the, the collector's edition. Oh, okay. Played the demo. Um, I don't want to act like I'm a Valkyria Chronicles fanatic because I'm not. I, I, I like them. I have history with them. I've played them before, yeah. but I don't play them all. So my thing with the collector's edition is I kind of want to see, like, they've got, like, this tank statue that comes. I want to see somebody unbox it. You know, I want to see it before I decide to buy in. Mm. I can tell you this now. I'm definitely getting that game. Another game we didn't mention coming out this year, 2018. So yeah. we have Diablo, Starlink, Valkyria Chronicles, Mario Party, Smash, and Pokemon. All of a sudden, you got a lot of options. I'm telling you, don't sleep. Now, I, no, I'm Switch, not, Switch has no telling, games. I'm not Switch telling no you games. because I know you're not the strategy gamer that I am or that I think Caroline is. But if you like Fire Emblem and you really wished it was this holiday – don't sleep on good Valkyria filler Chronicles. yeah yeah, yeah. Really I've, I've played them in the past too yeah um i pulled my headphones out so let me adjust my mic and screw up our audio um it's really really good the characters are really good i already have like two or three favorites i already like there's a grenadier that i really really enjoy it's just you know, it was good it was good i really like it. you should there's a demo Mm -hmm. on the eShop. If you're looking for something to play, it's a good demo. You get to play like three chapters of the game and you get oh, all good. these cutscenes. The game, I played it in, in, you guess what? I played this entire game portable. The entire thing I played in portable mm -hmm. mode. I didn't play it one time on TV. I kind of want to go back and replay it just to see how good it looks on the TV. On TV, Because That's on true. portable mode, it looks fantastic. That's a good point. It's got that anime comic style that the Fire Emblem has. Fire Emblem yep. is very similar. Yeah, it does look very similar. Yeah. Um, but very whimsical. It's very colorful, you know, flowers and stuff like that. It's good. And it's just, mm -hmm. I, I, I appreciated it because it's been a while. It's been so long. But to have snipers, you know, it's like Fire Emblem, but instead of swords and lances, man, you got sniper sniper rifles and tanks. Yeah, it's so, Advanced Wars, yeah, but it's Fire Emblem. Yeah. yeah. I, so I, I really enjoyed it. I can only recommend the game. I am pre-ordering the game. I will be playing the game the day it comes out. Um, you can bet on it. I'm just not sure if I'm going to get the Collector's Edition or not. So... With that, I think that's it for what we've been playing. Cool. So let's talk about um, my topic, and then I've got a question that I want to ask you. Okay. My topic has to do, and this really kind of stems off of, one, some discussion in our Discord, and two, kind of what I talked about last week on Shaq. Nintendo has sued ROM company, LoveRoms.com. This yeah. is news that we haven't really talked about. Now, the reason I wanted to bring it up is last week I went on and on about how I've been playing some ROMs on my computer. Mm -hmm. So I kind of want to <laughs> cover this from a different – I want to cover this from a bunch of different angles. So it would be more like a discussion. But I'll start with this. Full clarity, Nintendo is 100% within their rights to defend their intellectual property and anybody that's distributing it without their knowledge. 100%. Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. Kevin, if you didn't know, they sued LoveRoms.com and their other 
distributor, this is like a dot co company, whatever. A hundred and forty grand per title. And it it ultimately loads up to like, I don't know, ten hundred million dollars, something it's 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 yeah. it's an ridiculous price that they are suing for damages. The reason that they're doing this is to scare people. Yeah, totally. That's the reason. And it's and it's what I'm I'm not I'm trying not to be biased. It is one hundred percent within their right to do so. They should. Yes. Yep. Um, but the reason that they have these crazy numbers and all these um, figures, the reason they, they came with these damages is to scare other people. And it's worked. MU Paradise, which is yep. a huge emulator, they've been in business for 20 years. A great community. I've used them. I know a lot of people have. Mm-hmm. Like, if you type in ROM, they're like your number one Google search engine. Yep. They yep. took all their stuff down yep. for fear that they get the same letter. Do I think Nintendo is going to get a hunt no there's no money there to get and they're not going to spend no, yeah they don't have money to get it. it's going to be gonna spend the money to try to get it but no. that's that's the that's the point that's what they're trying to go after so i just wanted to talk about like roms in general and just kind of like nintendo space here um i'll start with just by asking you kevin have you ever downloaded a rom and used an emulator and uh what do you think about just without all the business stuff because we'll get into that in a minute just what do you think about ROMs as piracy. So for current gen stuff, like, cause obviously you can get up there and you can get ROMs for stuff that's current right now. Uh, that I'm completely against, but for some of the retro stuff, they, they're not making money off these anyway, anymore. They're not selling copies of, of Mega Man one. Well, I mean, no, technically now they are with the legacy collections, but you know what I mean? Like some of these games, like you cannot buy if you wanted to, or you're going to spend, you know, hundreds of dollars on eBay, which they're not getting a cut of anyway. So their money has been done. They're not producing them. They're not selling them anymore. Uh, I, yeah, I've used ROMs. We know that I hacked my NES classic. I if hacked my brother-in-law's NES classic. I did his SNES classic. Like I have done those things, but yep. I, I only have done it as a way of like, Hey, I can no longer play this game. But this is my way of still playing this game. Now, if Nintendo was going to say, hey, the reason we're shutting it down is because we're making this like Amazon video type site where you can download all these games to your Switch now and that's the library and you can rent them or you can buy them digital. Cool. Then I would totally understand that and I would support that decision Then I'd buy the games that I wanted to play. But until they do something like that, this stuff is just going to be lost. There's, there's going to be a point where mm. you cannot get a cartridge anymore. And there is no way of keeping that history per se for the average person who wants to play it, not necessarily like a collector. Okay. Uh, I, I'm going to come back to your game preservation thing because that's definitely yeah. a topic, a center, yeah. a topic, a, definitely a topic of debate. Um, I'll just say I use ROMs. I already, I've already talked about it before. I've, I have mm-hmm. my NES and my SNES Classic. Um, the way that I look at it, though, and this is somewhat self justifying my own behavior. I 100% realize that it's piracy and it's, I guess it's it's illegal and it's not good. Um, So I definitely, I own that. But I also look at it from the sense that without the piracy, a lot of things, you know, wouldn't have happened. Like had, had Napster never come along, we probably wouldn't have iTunes. Not yet at least. Yeah. It would have been a lot later. Yeah. There are definitely these movements where you, you pirates kind of showcase to a corporation, the demand. Yep. the desire and you know they can fight the piracy until they find a way to do it better and it wasn't until itunes said you know what just give us a dollar and you can download the song and that's a lot easier than risking your computer to these guys you know and their viruses and whatnot yeah and and then piracy became less of a deal because it just pe- became convenient i think yeah. that's really kind of the issue the reason that there are roms and you know pirate sites for lack of a better term the reason that there are these rom sites it's because people want access to this stuff and the companies aren't providing it. There's a demand there. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I think the difference is, and the reason why I think this lawsuit has come, is that Nintendo, and not just Nintendo, all of the gaming manufacturers now realize that the money is no longer in the hardware. Mm-hmm. For 30 years, their business has been hardware. Hardware, yep. And now they're realizing that the money is in the software. And their back catalog has value. 
that's why Xbox did backwards compatibility. That's mm-hmm. why Microsoft spent a billion dollars on PlayStation Now. That's why Nintendo is looking at Nintendo Online. That's why they're suing this ROM company, these ROM sites. They realize that now their back catalog has value that they never wanted to, to, to benefit from, but now they do. So I'm 100% for them actually suing the, the ROM site and shutting the ROM site down as long as they do provide an avenue for Together. people to access this stuff. Because Absolutely. here's the thing, that, and, and there, with the ROM sites, it becomes a bigger issue because there's a lot of licensing and music and yes. video and things that you can never get greenlit again. You know, like even Nintendo's first party stuff, they've got stuff they've never released since then. So mm-hmm. I guess now we can talk about game preservation because a lot of ROM defenders bring up the fact that if they didn't have ROMs and emulators, that a lot of these games would be lost to history. Yeah. Which is, that is true. The t- The question that I want to ask you though, is there a right, like do we as a, a gaming community have a no. right to say that we want to keep it all? Like do we have that right? Because if Nintendo doesn't want you to have a copy of a game, I mean it's in their right not to. Like there, there's no right for us to preserve every game, I don't think. You know, it's just like a book. If, like, if if nobody ever buys a book and all the copies get destroyed and the book just goes away, you don't have a right to keep it. You know, if you do, you'd buy the book. Well, yeah, but you see already in movies, they're digitizing everything. There are a lot in of books, movies, though. In books, they're digitizing everything. True, in music, a, they're digitizing there everything. There have been a lot of movies that have been lost through the years because they were never popular. Yes, you know, so like in that regard, that's that's really what I'm kind of getting to because the you, you have these collectors that you know it's it, I think it's a it's a easy argument to make. Hey, we want to preserve games. You're not giving us the ability to do so. Thus, our you know our behavior is justified. My rebuttal to that, let's just have a little conversation here. Is yeah, but do you have the right to own every game illegally? Like, well, all right. So, so let, let's let's go with this. So, when you purchase a CD, if mm-hmm. you physically still go purchase a CD, <laughs> you have the right to make a copy of that CD. Mm-hmm. You have a copy. You have the right to make a copy of a movie if you purchase it. The games are right now the only exception where they do not. This is your way of doing it, and they're telling you no, you can't. So, if I bought, you know my Nintendo library, which I did, you know, I had over a hundred Nintendo NES games originally. And then legally, I think you can make an argument saying, well, I can have a copy of the ones that I purchased. Now. Yeah. I'd have to prove that I purchased those, which that's going to be an issue for a lot of people then too, but you're allowed to make copies of stuff that you purchase. As long as you're not selling it or distributing it, then you should be able to do that. So while it's not a popular option, people do, uh, to do it and but your whole preservation thing or nintendo saying like no you're not allowed to have it i don't see as they're that they're doing that they're not telling you no you're not allowed to have it they're just saying you're not allowed to do it via this venue so they should be providing a venue where we can do it but you look at stuff like all right so popular example uh song of the south for disney we all know the zippity doodah song but how many people have seen the movie it came from right. not a whole lot that are still you know around you cannot get it because it dealt with issues of slavery and racism stuff like that and disney does not want to promote that anymore it was a movie for that time and it would not bode well for a lot of people now that's not happening with the games nobody's going back and playing you know super mario Bros. he's saying well this is offensive to italian people we're not all plumbers we don't go jumping on turtles and mushrooms it, that's not happening so that's not an excuse either so it's literally just nintendo saying we don't want you to do it um, but I would love for them to come up with, like I said, an Amazon Prime video type thing where you can rent or buy these games digitally. Then I'd have no problem and I would be pumped because then maybe I can finally play Mother 2. And even, Mother if they, <laughs> even if they don't do that, I mean, I'm sorry, even if they do provide that service, it's still not going to encompass every game that was ever made. No. You know, because the licensing thing just don't allow that to happen. Which, which how does it work in movies then? I don't that that I don't get. So like they're able to get around it or they have some way of doing it in movies, but like the Simpsons arcade game is a great example. So that that was out. It came to consoles at one point and they even did a remaster that was on like I think it was Xbox 360, but it was out for like 2 months and then it was gone again because it had to do with the license. True. Like you couldn't you couldn't purchase it and you you cannot get that anymore now. But how is a movie then able to be distributed digitally and then you still pay people for the music for the licensing for all yeah, stuff? I, have I don't no idea. Yeah. The only thing that I will say, the only thing that I'd offer to that point, I don't think with the movies it's as complicated. 
a lot of the okay. like Universal Pictures and stuff, like they're still in business. Whereas a lot of game developers and publishers That's are true. just gone. Yeah. Like, who do you go to? Right. Like, you know, the the music was licensed, so this company just doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, All those true. old yeah. THQ games and Acclaim games, like, nobody owns that stuff. So, I don't know. Maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. I, I, I Maybe. I never dove that deep in. That's that's a good point. Um, yeah, so there we go. If we were a Nintendo, make a game service. You know, I like, was, like I was Amazon Prime or Netflix. <laughs> I wonder if Nintendo would ever behoove themselves to actually agree to allow a ROM site to host them. Because in one of the things in their suit that they filed for loveroms.com was particularly that loveroms.com was benefiting from hosting these illegal files. You know, they made a case to say, like, hey, these aren't fans okay. that just love, you know, this isn't like some fan project. They are making revenue. They have donations that people make to them. They are selling ad space on the sure, website. Sure, okay. Yeah, and sounds you very can't, different. That's a no-no. Now yeah. you're making money off of Nintendo, and that's definitely a no-no. But I wonder if they would ever come up with a fan site or a Nintendo-owned site or an agreement with a site that says, hey, you can host the stuff we don't have. We won't sue you because you agree not to make money you know, off of these first party things or something. Like that. Uh, I, I kind of doubt it because they, yeah, so if I. Nintendo were to allow to allow something to exist, it would have to be tied to their consoles and have no other way of accessing it. it so also set like computers all kinds of precedent. And yeah, I agree with you. I just, I thought it'd be worth bringing wishful up. thinking. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to bring it up in case somebody was thinking about it. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> it's been a long day. One other point I was going to make was, I think with the ROM community, the majority of this community, I don't even think the majority of this community, basically all of the community, really, these are all PC players. Yeah. They're never going to buy a Switch. Or people that bought an NES Classic and were looking for ROMs to put on it. Exactly. <laughs> so Nintendo made some like, money. <laughs> yeah, like, and if anything, like they're never going to buy this stuff. Most of the time, no, they're not no. going to buy the hardware. And if no. they are buying the hardware, it's because of the ROMs. That's the other part yeah. of it. The yeah. ROMs, like they're f- they found a ROM that they thought was really cool, and they're like, "Man, that's really neat. I want to do more of that." Mm-hmm. Thus, they purchase the hardware, you know, and then they add on to it. It's like this niche, this niche geek thing, that that's cool. And I wonder, do you think Nintendo is doing a disservice to their community? by going after a site like is it i understand this within their legal rights to do so they're yeah. protecting their ip but is it good like fan relation is it good pr so yeah because i think the diehard people like caroline will go out and find that whatever it is and buy it and keep it and and have it forever but i don't think the people that are using the ROMs necessarily and sit there and say like, Oh, Hey, you know, I I would love to get an NES again. Let let me buy find an NES and and go with that. And if they do, Nintendo is not benefiting from that at all. That that's existed. That's been sold and resold 14 times over. Nintendo has no skin in that game at all. They'd rather you go out and get a switch instead and playing super Mario three. I don't think is necessarily going to be like, Hey, I can go for some Mario Odyssey because that's just not the same thing. So yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I think if anything, it kind of maybe, supports the diehard fans so the the people that are really gung-ho about it like yeah sure i'd love to play roms but like people like carolina sit there and say i found this copy of whatever game it is and you know there's a hundred left this is mine if nintendo shuts down other ways of accessing that that may make her feel better or her thing more valued to her saying like hey well you can't get it anywhere else like a physical copy of this that makes sense i would say as somebody that owns you know consoles that play old games versus playing some roms that i have on my computer and i don't have many it's not like i sit here and i'm sitting on a treasure trove of roms i got a a couple third-party roms that would never get re-released anyway yeah like ww yeah no none of those n64 games coming out again um they're clunky yeah emulators are clunky oh yeah weird and they don't work and i don't think they have any mass market appeal whatsoever no, you I'd know, rather play it on the console if yeah, possible. Yep. I, I would love to run every ROM on an SNES Classic because they've got save states and they load and mm-hmm. the artwork and it, you know, it works. Yeah. Versus on my computer, I got to hit F1 and Shift and H and it's a mess. It's a, you know, so there's a part of me that's just like, is it really worth it for Nintendo to be doing this? 
Like, really? Is this how you're spending your time shutting down <laughs> these little sites? These sites, I would love to know. I should have looked them up had I not been on the on the traf- on the the road today for five hours. <laughs> five hours. I would love to know the traffic that they generate because I just can't imagine that it's much. Like, in the grand scheme. They Nintendo probably got a bump in when... Millions, not yeah. hundreds of thousands. They they probably got huge bumps though with the NES Classic and the SNES, NES, NES Classic coming out because people knew they could hack them and it was super easy to do, but you needed to get a ROM source. So right. I think from then they could have potentially made a, a good chunk of money then off ad revenue and stuff like that. But that's a very limited thing that was not a going good to be chunk. On on. Ad depending revenue on, is not that. Depending you know, on how this they had in the nineties anymore. <laughs> oh well, yeah, that's true, but. <laughs> You figure, I don't know, I don't know. But they, even if they get a millions, bump. Millions and hits of traffic. Yeah. I mean, I think millions hits of traffic gets you a couple bucks. That's not that right. big a deal. Well, yeah, it depends. Yeah, it depends. But yeah, it, I, it was not going to be sustainable for long periods of time anyway. So Nintendo's shutting them down now. It's like, okay, yeah, the NES Classic, you can kind of find in most stores right now. And the SNES yeah. Classic, you can find it still a little bit harder than I think the NES right now, but you can find it. So yeah, some people will still be hacking these things now, but... That big boom that they had, that's over until they announce something else. Sure. And maybe and I was, my last question I was going to ask, do you think there is, there's got to be some relation to the launch of Nintendo online subscription service and them going after the ROM companies? Like, yeah, I think, so. I think so. I think some. Um, but we know like Nintendo's online service stuff, it's all going to be for the most part, we might get some surprises. It's all going to be the first party stuff, which to be honest, there's not a whole heck of a lot that Nintendo released first party that that hard to find physically though, too. So it's not necessarily like a thing like, Oh, I had to get this wrong. Can't get balloon fight. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Uh, I can't even find super Mario Bros. three. Yeah, you can yeah, like you can. not a problem at this point. Um, so yeah, I think it has something to do with that, but that's really only going to affect a much smaller percentage of games versus what the ROM sites have to offer for that library. Tom Servo, I saw that equation that you were referencing in the chat, and he's saying a hundred million dollar number. I saw that number in damages. They were charging like 140 grand per per title, and a lot of that was like estimated yeah. downloads and hits like over two decades and whatnot. They didn't. They definitely didn't pull that in revenue. Like we don't have no, like no, there's no way we don't they're, have they're, like they're little probably... millionaires running around because they have a ROM website. I'm pretty sure of that. No, no, that that would have been like, hey, they're calculating, like, hey, how many people, how many copies of Mario Three were pirated that we could have that we could have sold, sold on the at eShop full on, value exactly at the eShop, whatever, and then that's how they got those those numbers out there for sure. Yeah, that's yeah that wasn't based on what they because Nintendo number one wouldn't even have access to what the site pulled in for profit anyway. They could ask for it uh, legally, but they they don't have that in time to file the suit now. Yeah, that that's yeah that's that's exactly. So anyway, I just wanted to talk about it because it's definitely yeah. in the news, and some people really care about ROMs, some people don't. You know, you have the game preservationists, and I understand about game preservation. It's it's just interesting because we've lost a lot of movies, we lost a lot of music, we've lost a lot yeah. of journalism and you know articles. It's, there's a part of me that wonders, like, just how much of it really matters. I guess is the right way of posing the question, like. Yeah, but there's going to be people that re- will regret it if they're not regretting it already that they didn't keep something. Sure. Or or buy something when they had the chance. Like that it, that's going to happen to anybody. It's but. interesting though. There is kind of some hypocrisy here that the game companies that own the rights to these things didn't care enough. To yes. Or make them available until now. But they're going to stop the people. But then they're going to stop the people that are doing it, even if they're not going to yeah, do it. So I agree. People 100%. have been doing it for like twenty years, and now <laughs> we care. You know, so yeah. I love when Nintendo's like, "We're going to charge you one hundred and forty k per ROM for twenty years." And it's like, where have you been for twenty years? Why right. do you suddenly care now? Like, I one hundred percent understand it is their intellectual property. They have the right to do whatever they want with it. I get it. I'm not. I'm not arguing that. But there is like some sort of like, if I was a judge, I'd be like, "What's the motive?" Why now? Why now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what changed? And what's changed is, again, hardware. Yep. People are getting out of hardware. Everything's becoming software. Software, services, subscriptions. Nobody's doing hardware anymore. You can stream it. You can beam it. Like, you know, the, the hardware market is crashing. Yep. You, people are realizing you don't need two terabytes of RAM and everything to do everything anymore. Like, we've we've kind of capped out. There's awesome things to be done with much less. So. Agreed. Yeah. Anyway. Um. We did have a question from Rebecca, which I yeah. alluded to earlier. She wants to know, what are your top five favorite, top five Nintendo Switch games? You can take that and go quintessential Switch, 
you can do top five, however you want, because we didn't have any time to, I have had no time to think about it. Mm -hmm. Just, what are your top five? If somebody was buying Nintendo Switch, here are the five games you got to get. Okay. In no particular order. Breath sure. of the Wild. Yep. Um, Mario Rabbids. Mm -hmm. Mario Kart 8. Mm -hmm. Hyrule Warriors. Mm. And... Oh, where do I go here? Um, That's good. I'm... You're not going to agree with this one, but I'm going to say Mario Odyssey. Okay. No, it's, it's your list. Yep. I'm going to go with Breath of the Wild. We both agree. Breath of the Wild is the one. Yep. That's the one. Mario Kart 8 is the second one for me. Like It's yep. like 1B for yep. both those games. Yes, you absolutely do. Yep. Golf Story. I was thinking that, and I'm just, uh, yeah. System exclusive, man. I, I that's true. For the amount of publicity that games get when they are exclusive to other consoles, I have no idea why Nintendo hasn't been ringing that exclusive bell for eight plus months. Now. Yeah, right. Why are they not telling the world that you can only play Golf Story on Switch? I don't get it. It makes no sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so that's three. Ooh, it's good because there's like four that jump immediately to me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Hollow Knight. Okay. As much as I can't beat Hollow Knight, I do. Re Hollow Knight's amazing. That's a great game. Hollow Knight, Cart, Breath of the Wild, Golf Story. I'm down between like Rabbit, Splatoon. I'm gonna go with Xenoblade. Xenoblade wow. Chronicles 2, Hollow Knight, Golf Story, Cart, and Breath of the Wild. See, I think where we differed here is... Well, wait, what was the question again? Repeat the question. My top five? Rebecca asked, what are your top five Switch games right now? Not coming, because I think we all yeah. think well, yeah, Smash yeah, yeah, yeah. is going right up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I don't know. Pokemon will go up there, um, maybe. I don't, I don't think... Know. Yeah, I don't think my answers would have changed that much, but for some reason, when you said it, and I was going in my head, I'm sitting there saying, okay, if someone's buying a Switch, what are the games that they need to get? And that's kind of where I went, saying, like, hey, these are the best games that are accessible to kind of everybody. I'm just kind of going... Uh, versus stuff for me. But yeah, no, your answer makes more sense. Yeah, yeah. now that you say it, I'm like, that makes more sense, because I'm like, because Xenoblade is not a game for everybody. You're right. Even, go even Golf Story isn't for everybody, right. but, like, the other answers made games. sense. Yeah, right, sure, sure. Yeah, so I mean, I, I might sw I, I might swap out, um, you know, Mario Odyssey for something else if that's the case. But I still stand, I think, by the rest of the stuff. Odyssey is so it's, good; it's, it has such wide appeal. Yep, and I like again. I yeah, feel like no, I, I know. always have to to defend myself. <laughs> I like Odyssey. Didn't love it. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think it was the greatest Mario game ever made. That's that's the only thing. I really, it's great. It's a great Mario yeah. game. Um, yeah, I, I like that. I, Golf Story is an exclusive. It's an indie. Hollow Knight, dude. Hollow Knight's just, it's incredible. I've even went back and tried to beat the Spectre. <laughs> I can't. Like, I need to pay somebody to beat this part of the game so I can keep going because it is that good. It's that good. It's like, it's like Super Metroid for Super Nintendo. Okay. That's it's what it is for Switch. So if you're to compare libraries, Hollow Knight is Super Metroid for Switch. Okay. And yeah. that's what it is right now. It's so good. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I think so because I, I was thinking Splatoon because it's a shooter, but I, I love Splatoon. Splatoon's Me great, too. but I don't think it's for everybody, and I don't think yeah. you have to have it. Like if you don't, I'm, you get I'm Wolfenstein, never... you get Doom. There are other things that you can do, you know. Um, but Cart is a must-have. I think yeah, Cart's for everybody. Must-have. You've got to play golf, so you owe it to yourself to try. Even if you don't even think you like golf, you're like this is stupid. I hate golf. Still try it. You have yeah. no idea what you're missing out on because it's yep, not yep. golf. It's Earthbound. It's something special. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, really it's not golf. Yeah. It's Earthbound. Quit thinking golf. It's Earthbound. Um, okay, so that's it for us. Um, we're going to sign off here. Kevin, let everybody know where they can find you. Uh, you can find me at PSVG Kevin. Uh, TV slash PSVG Kevin when I can figure out the issues with my computer. <laughs> um, you can find me most weeks hosting the flagship PSVG show. Uh this week, the next episode you will guys will hear Oriandor C uh, will feature 
Uh, we'll have Josh, Dev, and a special guest who doesn't come around the podcasting circuit very often on other shows. So I'm going to leave it at is that. Is it Jason? You have Jason on? No, Jason's on like every show. He's on our show. Not on it. Well, yeah. It's not any of right, our so, shows. So Jason's <laughs> name is in the credits of a lot of shows, but he doesn't always show up. But yeah. Okay. No, it's. It, I can confirm it is not Jason. <laughs> okay. Um, you can follow me over there on Twitter at Play Nintendo. You can follow the Nintendo Shack, which yes, now can. has its own Twitter account at Shack Life. Um, I will tell the story quickly. I've been trying to get Nintendo Shack for like yeah. two years. I filed <laughs> hundreds of complaints and everything, and there's some nobody that's never used it that's sitting on the account, and I can't get it get released. But Shack Life got released. This is recent because I've been checking on this one too. It got released in like the last six weeks, and I was like, yes, that works. So follow us at Shack Life, please, at Shack Life on Twitter, and um, all of all of our stuff at twitch.tv slash PSVG. We thank you, um, all of you, for tuning in to the PSVG Podcast Network. We hope that you listen to one of our other shows. And uh, if you like what we do and how we do it, we encourage you to check out um, the Patreon community, patreon.com slash make us better. Go check out Sean Capri, who's launching Xbox Drive 2.0. Go Aww. check out Joseph Moran in, his, in the trophy room and Warp Russell Gaming and Nintendo Nostalgia and the entire Potter family that we are a part of. Um, I'm so happy that we decided to join them. It's such a great group of folks. Mm-hmm. I love the Discord. It's, yeah, it's popping. It, it's good. So uh, definitely go check all that out. Check us out, psvg.blog, all the things. We appreciate it. I'm signing off, getting us out of this terrible show. I've had a terrible day. And, uh, yeah, I, I got to go play something to make myself feel better. So, uh, Kevin, um, say goodnight, Koopalinks. Good night, Koopalinks. And Sean and Bobby, let go of that Twitter handle for Donnie. Give us Nintendo show. <laughs> ah! we, we, we said it first. Just give it up, guys. Come on. <laughs> Good one. Good night, Koopalinks. Bye. Whenever you're ready. All right. This is Frederick from Fire Emblem Awakening. And I forgot the line already. What? been a production of the play some video games podcast network find more great content at play some